Yo, what's going on guys? So around two years ago, I made my first video about farming bestiary. And back then, bestiary has been mostly farmed by groups. So I wanted to try it out as a solo player, which turned out to be extremely profitable, even solo. Since then, bestiary got a lot of updates. Newbies have been added, uh, group uh, farming has been nerfed, and we also got some quality of life. So now Bistar is better than ever and in my opinion is one of the best ways to make currency when you are starting playing the league, since you can make a good profit from it even in white maps. So this league I have been farming Bistar and a lot of people have been asking me questions about how exactly Bistar works, what beasts you should sell and which maps you should farm. So in this video I want to explain all of the Bistar mechanics. Coincidentally, the uh, person that has been helping me a lot with understanding Beastary, uh, Mr. Shodokan, who probably knows more about Beastary than anyone else, uh, decided to write a document with all of his knowledge about Beastary. So if you want to uh, read the written guide, make sure to check it out, and I'm gonna link it in the description. Okay, so let's start with the basics. So how to encounter Beastary and what do we get from it? And by the way, if you know all of the basics, there should be timestamps in the video so you can skip this part. Uh, so the first time you're gonna encounter Bistiare is going to be in Act 2. You're gonna get the quest Einhar's Hunt and from that point on, you're gonna have a small chance to encounter uh, Bistiare in every map you're gonna enter. But there are additional ways to encounter Bistiare and first way is through Master Missions because uh, Einhar is part of the uh, master system, so whenever you're gonna uh, get any master mission from killing a map boss in any maps, you're gonna get one of the missions. And depending which map you're gonna uh, get th that mission from, you're gonna be able to use this mission either or white, yellow or red map. And you can do it through here. And to get more uh, master missions, you can invest into some Atlas passes, like for example, Animal Companion gives you 4% chance for additional Einhar master mission on competition, on, on competition, and Hunting Season gives you a higher chance that whenever you get any master mission, that is going to be uh, Einhar. And also, uh, randomly encounter master are going to be Einhar. But uh, there are some other ways, for example, you can guarantee uh, Einhar with the uh, compass in your map which gives you bestiary encounter but the best way and the most common way is through the bestiary scarabs so a rusted bestiary scarab is gonna guarantee a bestiary encounter and it's gonna give you one additional red beast in the map uh, bestia uh, the uh, polished bestiary is gonna give you two and gilded three red beasts but what are those red beasts so the way bestiary encounter in map uh, works is that when you're gonna enter a map with Bistari active, uh, there are going to be some yellow and red beasts uh, in the map and they're gonna be marked on your minimap. And once you're gonna kill them, Einhar is going to catch them. So you're actually not gonna be able to kill them. They're gonna be left at like 1% life. And then Einhar is going to catch them and transfer them to the menagerie. And what is the menagerie? Well, once you do your Einhar's uh, hunt quest, you're gonna unlock it on your a map and you can uh, teleport to your menagerie from here and over there you actually can see all of your uh, catched beasts in here so like in menagerie depths but to be honest it doesn't really do anything it's just for the aesthetics you can just see them uh, over here but what is the important part is the uh, blood altar so over here you can see all of your beasts that you captured and uh, that's the difference between the yellow and the red beast. So all of these beasts that actually have like the art over here, uh, they are considered the red ones. And the beasts that don't have any art like in here, uh, actually not these ones, uh, let me show you in here. So for these ones, for example, that have like a gray art. Uh, so these ones also, for example, they are considered yellow beasts. And you have the uh, beast crafting system over here. And the way it works is that depending on which red beast you use, you're gonna be able to do some kind of craft. And yellow beasts are just some additional ingredients that you need for any craft. And most of the time you're gonna need three of them and sometimes you're gonna need two. So for example, if you want to create a random unique item, you need Krykic Savage Crab. And you always are going to need Krykic Savage Crab to be able to uh, do this recipe. And it doesn't matter what kind of other three uh, random uh, rare yellow beasts 
And just to show you how it works, uh, to do one uh, beast crafting uh, recipe, you just uh, press craft and you're gonna have to kill the beasts again, the beast that you uh, found in the maps. And then you get the item and I got random uh, item, which is the white thing. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just to show you. And what you also can do is you can sell these beasts. To do that, you have to go to the Einhar and here you can uh, purchase the bestiary orb. And the way it works is you go to your uh, bestiary which for me is the H button, which is also the challenges and so on. You go to bestiary and to capture beasts, and then you can press your bestiary orb on any of the beasts, and then you can sell it on trade. So for example, this one, and this one is captured, and now I can sell it. Now let's summarize the basics. So you can encounter a bestiary in maps just randomly or through master missions, but the best way to do it is through Scarabs, which are also gonna guarantee additional red beasts. Then when you are doing the map, you're gonna catch some of the yellow and red beasts, and then you can use them on the altar to uh, make some recipes. Or if you don't want to uh, do that, you can uh, put them in orbs, thanks to the uh, bestiary orbs, and then you can sell them on trade or on TFT, Discord. Now that we know all of the basics, let's talk about which beasts you should target farm and you can sell. Uh, and what I mean by target farm is that once you know all of the uh, beasts, how do they look like, uh, you can actually skip all of the uh, bad red beasts and you're gonna only kill the uh, good ones. It doesn't matter too much in the end, but it's just a little bit of efficiency. So if there is a beast that is not really worth anything, you can just skip it. And for yellow beasts, you should actually uh, try to catch all of them because every single yellow beast, most of the time, uh, you can sell it for between 0 0.5 and 1 chaos profit. Uh, it goes actually for around 1.5 to 2 chaos, but you have to remember that to put every single or beast in orb, uh, you have to spend 1 chaos, so you are losing uh, 1 chaos on it. So, like I said, profit is around 0 0.5 to 1 chaos per yellow beast. So for the uh, red beast, I'm actually gonna use the uh, Shadowcan's uh, dog, and here you can see all of the beasts that you should look out for. So here is the Phenomal Pegarachnid and Creaky Chimeras. These two are uh, the base two beasts that most of your profit that you're gonna uh, get from farming Pistera is gonna come from. Except for the yellow beast. Yellow beast is also usually very good amount of profit, but also yellow beasts are kind of annoying to sell and you need a lot of them. Usually you sell uh, one inventory for around uh, 100 to 120 chaos, so it just takes a long time to put all of them in orb. So uh, some people just skip that part. So yeah, Phenomal Pegarachnid and Craigie Chimeral is gonna be core of your profit. On top of that, Farigwo Alpha and Lynx Alpha is a little bit uh, more profit. And then Craigie Vassal and Farrick Tiger Alpha usually are the biggest profit at the beginning of the league because people want Krakik Vassal uh, for uh, six linking with tainted uh, fusings. So it just guarantees corrupting item to 30% quality, so there is no chance to turn item into the rare item. So people like to use it on uniques to have a, a better way to uh, make six links out of them. And Farrick Tiger Alpha is used for, to farm uh, Farrick's 4 and for the aspects of the cut, so it is pretty expensive early on. In fact, this league I made uh, multiple divines just from Kriki Vassals and Farrick Tiger's Alpha because I was able to sell them for between 1 to 2 divines. And on top of that, uh, Kriki Mao and uh, Farrick Frost Hellion Alpha are also pretty good. So now that you know uh, which beasts are sellable, uh, after every uh, session of farming bestiary, what you can do is you can go to your bestiary and just type, uh, let's say, uh, Plague Arachnid, and you're gonna see that you have one. Then, like I showed you earlier, you're gonna get the orb, put it in orb, and you can sell it on trade or on TFT. And you're gonna continue doing that with uh, Craig uh Chimera, and then uh, Wolf, Links, and so on. And I'm actually gonna link in the description the regex that you can type in here uh, that is gonna show you uh, all of the beasts so for example something like this you can do and it's gonna show you all of the links and walls and so on and after you're done with all of the uh, good beasts then you can actually remove all of the bad ones and the way you do it is actually this league uh, we got the new button which is in here release 
and you can just click in here and remove all of the beasts that you don't want. And why do we need to do that? Well, first of all, it's just uh, nice to uh, not have your uh, beast tray cluttered. It's just uh, easier to see all of the good and bad beasts this way if you just remo are removing constantly the bad ones. But also on top of that, there actually is a limit of 1000 beasts in your bestiary. And once you're gonna uh, reach that limit, the oldest beasts are gonna start being removed when you catch a new one. So make sure to uh, clean your bestiary from time to time and just remove all of the beasts that you don't want. And after you're done with removing all of the bad beasts, then you can just start uh, putting all of the uh, yellow beasts in your bestiary orbs and then put them in some one big tab and you're gonna put them on TFT. Most of the time yellow beasts uh, are only sellable by TFT. It's kind of hard to sell them by trade. So for the red ones, you can uh, use TFT or V trade. You can just sell them by name. But if you are selling yellows, you're probably gonna have to use TFT. And now let's move on to probably the most important part of the video, which is uh, which maps you should use for bestiary. And to understand the map choice, especially the tiers of the maps, you're going to need to know what are the rules behind spawning the beasts. Uh, so here, you can see that beasts are segregated into tiers and also genus. So for the tiers, uh, for example, in tier one, there is Faric Tiger Alpha, Krakic Emerald, Phenomal Pegarachnid, Phenomal Hybrid Arachnid, Krakic uh, Spider Crab, and Sakalin Rex. And here you can see all of the tier two and everything else is just tier three. And the reason why we need to know which beasts are tier one is because uh, the way the game rolls the beasts that appear in the map is in order. First, it chooses the tier of the beast, then genus, which I'm gonna talk about uh, a bit later, and then the beast within the tier. So what that means is that, uh, let's say in a map, there is three red beasts, two of them are chosen as a tier two, and then third one, let's say, uh, chose tier three, I mean tier one, uh, so that one beast is going to be one of these. And obviously we want to uh, have Cracky Chimeral or Fenua Plegarachnid because these ones usually are the most expensive ones. So we don't want any other uh, beast uh, to have a chance to appear in our maps. And to help you with that, you can go here to the bottom and you can see that certain beasts actually have certain tiers of maps that can uh, they can start appearing in. So for example, Sakavin Rex uh, can only appear in tier 5 and above Krakic Spider Crab, tier 8, uh, for example, Fenomal Hybrid Arachnid, tier 10, Farik Tiger, 13, and Krakic Mo tier 14. So Farik Tiger is actually also tier 1, Sakavin Rex is tier 1, Krakic Spider Crab is tier 1, and Fenomal uh, Hybrid Arachnids are, is also tier 1. So uh, if, if you uh, look here, all of those beasts, except for Krakic Chimeral and Fenomal Plague Arachnid, uh, can appear in higher tiers of maps. So if you want the most uh, efficient way to farm uh, Krakic Chimerals and Fenomal Plague Arachnids, you should be doing between tier 1 and tier 4 maps. So you actually can't have any of these. So anytime you encounter a uh, tier 1 beast, it is going to be Krakic Emerald or Phenomal Plague Arachnid. It is going to be a bit different, maybe during the uh, beginning of the link, so like day 1 and day 2 when Farik Tiger Alpha is more expensive and uh, Krakic Basal is more expensive. At this point, you might want to farm uh, at least tier 13. So this way you actually have chance for them to appear. Kirkic Vassal is actually a uh, tier 2, so uh, it, it's not gonna hurt the amount of uh, Fenomal Plague Arachnids, Kirkic Emeralds, and uh, Faric Tigers you're gonna find, because it's a separate tier. But obviously you're gonna see the other ones, so Sakavin Rex and so on, so you're gonna find less uh, good beasts in uh, higher tier ones, but at least you're gonna be able to find tigers and vassals, which are good at the beginning. So later on in the league, if prices of tiger uh, alphas are low and uh, vassals are low, if you just want to target farm Bistere specifically, you don't want to do any other mechanics, you can just do 
white maps. And this is why Beastera, in my opinion, is one of the best mechanics to do early on, because you can literally just do it in the white maps without any issues on almost any build, and you're gonna be able to uh, farm it. Uh, another important thing is Genus. So, uh, for example, Kraki Kimeral is part of the uh, Deep family. The Krakik Mao is also part of the Deep, and Krakik Vassal is part of the Deep. So if you uh, go to your Atlas passives, and here is the cluster of nodes which lets you find certain families more often, so the genus. So here you can see a 100% chance for the uh, Deep Beast to appear here, 100% chance for, I mean, increased chance for the Caverns to appear here for the Suns and here for the Wilds. So if you want uh, more Krakik Maws, Krakik Vassals, you would go for the Deep, and this way you're gonna be able to uh, find more of them. But for example, if you are farming uh, Tier 1s to Tier 4, and you want the most amount of Krakik Emeralds and Phenomenal Plague Arachnids, going for both Deep and Caverns, because uh, Phenomenal Plague Arachnids is from Cavern and Krakik Emerald is from the Deep, is actually not going to do anything. Because, uh, like I said earlier, first is chosen tier and then genus. So as long as uh, you're gonna have a tier one beast, increasing the chance for both of these genus is not gonna do anything. It's already gonna be either Kirky Kimral or Phenomal Plegarachnid. It is going to help you if you're gonna do it in red maps though, because then it's gonna give you 100% increased chance for Kimral and Phenomal Plegarachnid uh, compared to like Sakawin Rex or uh, Farik Tiger Alpha, which is the uh, Wild, and Sakawin Rex, uh, which is Sand. Uh, but what it can help you with is, for example, Kraki Kimeral is more expensive than Phenomal Plague Arachnid, then you can go for uh, just the Deep, and this way you're gonna encounter more Kraki Kimerals uh, than Phenomal Plague Arachnids in white maps. Uh, also, if you want uh, cracking Basals and you are farming uh, red maps, uh, going for deep is also going to help you in here. But remember, that is going to decrease the amount of Farik Wolves Alpha and Farik Lynx Alpha you're going to find. So make sure to check which beasts are the most expensive. So to sum up the map choice, uh, if you want to farm Bestiary the most efficiently and you want to focus mostly just on Bestiary, you should farm maps up until tier 4, because this way, from tier 1, which is the most important tier, the only beasts that can appear are Kraki Chimerals and Phenomal Plague Arachnids. If you want to uh, uh, encounter more Kraki Chimerals than Phenomal Plague Arachnids, uh, go for the uh, Deep family. Uh, if you don't care, go for the both one. And if you're gonna choose uh, both families, it is actually not going to increase the chances for two of these beasts. If you are gonna do uh, red maps and you still want to encounter as many of these two beasts, then we go for the uh, deep and the caverns. And the beginning of the league, if you want to farm the most amount of Kraki Passals and Farig uh, Tiger Alpha, which is uh, tier 1, then you would go for the deep and the wilds. And you would do uh, at least a tier. Uh, 13 for the Tigers and at least tier 12 for the Kirkic Vassals. And remember that Vassals are not gonna hurt the amount of uh, Tigers you're gonna find and the uh, Chimerals and Plegarachnids because it is a separate tier. And in terms of the layout, you just want to go for uh, what is the fastest, the uh, smallest layout. So uh, here actually uh, Shodohakan made the tier list of beasts, and I actually mostly uh, agree with that uh, list. List I actually would go for builds, I would put it uh, in a S+. Plus. I actually don't like Strand that much, I would put it in here, so uh, it doesn't matter too much. Um, it's mostly your personal choice, but the most important thing is you want to do these uh, smallest maps as possible, so uh, beach, atoll, fields, shore, all of these maps are gonna be pretty good, so you can farm as many beasts per hour as possible. And remember, like I said earlier, you don't have to kill all of the beasts, you just uh, should uh, kill the most expensive ones and the yellow ones, if you also uh, want to sell those. And for the Atlas tree, 
uh, when you would farm bestiary, obviously you would go for most of the bestiary nodes, so just uh, type uh, bestiary at the top, and you're gonna see that uh, at the top there is the Great Migration that gives you 8% chance to have packs of beasts instead of monsters uh, in the map, which basically is going to give you between 20 and I think 40 beasts in a map, which is a very good source of a lot of yellow beasts. And this thing also pairs uh, very well with the bottom node, this one. Yellow bees have 15% chance to be replaced with red bees. So this is also going to give you a lot of red bees in a map like that. Uh, on top of that, uh, here you have uh, some additional uh, yellow bees in maps. And here you have a chance to duplicate them from these two small points. So 6% chance that you're going to create a copy of the beast. And uh, here you have a chance that they're going to appear in pair. So from time to time, you are going to, uh, when you're going to encounter Cricky Chimera, let's say, it is going to appear in pair. And uh, both of those are going to have a chance to duplicate. So sometimes very rarely, though, but sometimes you're actually going to get even four Cricky Chimeras instead of one. Here there is a Mighty Hunter, which just basically makes your Einhar more uh, powerful, so you don't really need to take it if you want to have the most amount of profit, but if you are struggling, it can help you a little bit. And the remaining points uh, give you uh, some additional uh, master missions, so here 4% uh, chance, here 1%, uh, 1%. So if you are struggling on currency, especially maybe like early on, and you can't buy a lot of scarabs, even though they are super cheap, especially the rusted ones, uh, you can go for missions. And also speaking of scarabs, in terms of uh, money, sometimes people ask me which uh, ones are the best. The best rule of thumb I like to follow, follow is one chaos per red beast. So if you are paying two chaos for uh, polished, go for it, three chaos for gilded, and up to one chaos for rusted. And most of the time the most uh, cost efficient one is the polished, so I just buy them for two chaos. And here obviously is the tree that I already talked about, which is the uh, increased chance for certain families. And here you have uh, some additional chance for red beast. And here is actually the most important node out of all of them, which is natural selection. This basically is going to uh, give you a better chance for the uh, rarer beasts. So make sure to take that whenever you are doing beastary. And for the other league mechanics, you just want to focus on something that is super fast. And if you are doing uh, white maps, uh, something that is good in white maps, uh, just like bestiary. So the best candidate is obviously Essence, because Essence is not that affected by the uh, map tier. And also, uh, they are very fast to kill, and sometimes Essences are going to be uh, beasts. So uh, you're going to have two in one, you're going to kill Essence and beasts at the same time. Things like uh, Delirium for farming Delirium Orbs, uh, Heist for Contracts, Harbinger for uh, Tractor Shards, and that's basically it. And the next thing I want to talk about is uh, Einhar Memories. So by the way they work is you're gonna buy them, uh, as of right now they go for uh, around uh, 1.5 Divine, this actually shows it incorrectly. Here you can see uh, they go for around 1.5 divines and the way you do them is you use it on a map and the tier of maps doesn't matter so the best use of them is to remove the watchstones and use it on white map and uh, where I like to use it is here on colonnade because the way it works is that it is going to choose this map and then two maps, co maps connected to it. So it is the best uh, to use them in corners, so there's a limited amount of maps it can choose. Because let's say you would choose it uh, on something like Beach, which is actually a pretty good map for it, because it's pretty fast. But then it, would, it could go for something like Underground Sea, which is not the best, Factory, uh, Jungle Valley would, could be good, but uh, something like uh, Desert Spring... Actually, Desert Spring wouldn't be too bad, but Geode is kind of annoying, so yeah, you don't want a cluster of maps like this. So you would go for something like Colonnade, or maybe here, Scriptorium, and then go for Belfry, Strand, and so on. So I would go in here, and then as you can see, it chose uh, Dunes and Shrine. 
Shrine is not the best, but it's also not the worst. So now you're going to have to do these three maps. And you actually don't need to have these maps. You can just go uh, to Einhard, talk to him. And here you can uh, roll the, these maps with alchemy and so on. But for a bestiary memory, you don't have to do it. And the most important thing is the line, the second line uh, from the top. Two red bees in area are going to be replaced by harvest beasts. And then the second map, after you do this map, the second map is going to have three uh, special harvest beasts and the third one is going to have four of them. So in total you're going to find nine special harvest beasts. And uh, what are these uh, special harvest beasts? So you can go to uh, beast crafting uh, on the wiki and here you can read at the bottom all of the special harvest. Uh, recipes. So here are all nine of them. So there is Vivid Watcher, Voucher, and so on. So for example, there is one that converts Awakened Gem into uh, another Awakened Gem. There is one that rerolls the Synthesis Implicit Modifiers, create a Guardian Map, increase level of Awakened Gem. So as you can see, a lot of them are very powerful, which means also a lot of them are very expensive. And in my opinion, the only ones that I wouldn't sell are the Primal, primal Rex Material, Primal Assist Caller, Primal uh, Crash Claw, and that's basically it. All of the other ones are pretty good. So uh, Memories usually can give you a pretty good amount of uh, profit, but what people are doing is they are doing uh, Memories Rotations. So what you can go do is you can make some rotations, uh, let's say in uh, TFT, you can find six people. And the way it's going to work is that the main person that opened the memory is going to have 100% chance uh, to uh, capture the beast. But everyone else in the uh, party is going to have 20% chance to capture the beast. So this way uh, you can make them maybe pay the, like 20 chaos and for the slot. So you're gonna pay a little bit less for your memory and they are gonna get bestiary for a very little investment. Or what you can do is that each person provides one memory and then you just, each one of you runs one of them and on top of your own uh, beast, you are gonna get 20% of the other people. And now the last thing I want to talk about Must is making money through uh, beast crafting. Uh, so to be honest, there is not that much to talk about. Uh, first thing is I want to mention is that there are actually some beasts that I wouldn't sell, but you can still use them yourself uh, after you're done with uh, farming. So for example, the only create unique beast that I would use is the belt, which is Fire Cape, because you can create the Headhunter or Mageblood. I've actually never created a Mageblood or Headhunter this way, but who knows, maybe at some point it is going to happen. All of the other ones are not really worth it, especially because the uh, you need the three yellow bees for them. So that's around like five chaos for each recipe and you're probably not gonna get five chaos back. If you're going to have to buy them, obviously if you use your own, it would be a bit less, but still, it's not really worth it in my opinion. Uh, the other ones is gain a free use of each map crafting option. This one is from the uh, harvest memory so uh, you can't encounter it normally and the same thing for gain one of each atas mission these ones i would use just use yourself you're gonna get some free crafting options and some master missions but remember that if you do it in white maps like i recommended the master missions are going to be white as you can see here this is why i have so many white missions because i actually did some memories earlier so now i have quite a lot of them uh, the other uh, beast i would use myself is level 21 corrupted gem uh, this is pretty good early on in the league. Later I just uh, remove these beasts, it's not really worth uh, that much anymore. Uh, another one is create a fully uh, 6 uh, socket rare. It's, uh, it's Sakavin Vulture. It's especially good early on in the league. You can make some uh, nice 6 things through it. Uh, Shaper, Elder or Conqueror map. This is also from Harvest Memory. Uh, you can uh, use them yourself or you can sell them. Usually they go for a little bit uh, cheaper than the actual Guardian maps, but it is much easier to just sell beasts in bulk rather than just selling each map uh, one by one, so it is up to you. A Create Vival Temple is, I mean, it is still pretty good. You can sell them probably for between 5 to 10 Chaos, uh, but it's just price of yellow beasts, so it is up to you. Do you prefer to sell Vival Temples or do you prefer to sell yellow beasts? 
you uh, decide. Uh, imprints, obviously you will just sell them, and I, un I, unless you know a little bit about crafting and you have a use for them, obviously you can use them. And 30% uh, quality is probably pretty good early on in the league to create some six links. If you find any vassals, you can make six links and uh, then sell them. Uh, unless cracky vassals is just much more expensive than six links themselves. Uh, transform a gilded scarab to a wing scarab, thanks to the uh, Farig uh, Frost Hellion. That's also another good uh, beast to use yourself. Or you can just buy a bunch of these beasts, buy a bunch of gilded scarabs, uh, transform them into a winged one. Uh, obviously, you always have to remember that you need to buy yellow beasts if you want to do it, unless you have uh, your own, and uh, calculate the profit, and it might be actually a pretty good way of making money. Same thing with increasing the level of uh, Awakened Gems by one. This is from a Wild Bramblejack. Uh, that piece also comes from the uh, Harvest Memory. And we have also some gambling uh, ways of making money. So you can reroll the Awakened Gem into another one. Keep in mind, uh, this is weighted. So things like Spell Echo, uh, Spell Cascade, Multi-Strike and so on have much uh, lower chance to appear rather than uh, the other one. So... Uh, it is a bit of a gamble. Uh, another one, a real synthesis implicit on modifier. This is also a gamble. You can uh, uh, make some insane items, especially some people are making uh, mirror tier items with three perfect implicit uh, with synthesis uh, in combination with uh, imprinting the item. So you reroll, you imprint an item and then you reroll until you hit what you want. If you hit something bad, then you go back with imprint to what you had earlier and you just continue doing it until you have a perfect item. But it is pretty expensive. It takes uh, many tries to uh, make a perfect item. So I wouldn't really recommend that. Most of the time, you're just going to sell vivid vultures. And uh, these are uh, some beasts that just gives you mod to an item. So if you don't uh, have any exalts and you just want to add a modifier to an item, you can use uh, one of these beasts. Uh, remember, this is not going to add a special uh, like Elder Influence uh, modifier. It is just going to add any random modifier to an, let's say, Elder item. So it still can add things like Evasion, Life, and so on. And uh, the last gambling one is Reroll Water Eye. Uh, this is an, another piece from uh, Einhar Memory, Wild Hellion Alpha. So this basically rerolls one of the uh, aura modifiers on uh, Water Eye. So it's just another gamble. And Split Beast, I would just sell unless you want to maybe split things like logbooks or this link, the crucible uh, items you can split them if they are worth like three divines or something you can split them and then sell two items instead of one so that's a pretty good way of making money and added crafting a meta modifier to a non-unique item is also pretty good because if you have an item with full three suffixes and you have three prefix this guarantees uh, suffixes cannot be changed so this is the best way to use this beast. So if you know a bit about crafting, you can make use of this beast. And that's pretty much it. And the easy use early on in the league, you can just add some uh, modifiers to your flasks. And at the bottom, you can see all of the special aspect uh, beasts and bosses. So whenever you get, let's say, the Farrick Tiger Alpha, you're gonna uh, do this recipe and you're gonna find portals to Pharaoh's Den and then you're gonna kill the Pharaoh over there and you have a chance to drop Pharyx 4, which is a very expensive item. And on top of that, you're gonna uh, capture the uh, uh, Pharaoh, which is a recipe for aspect of the cut. So you can put an aspect on your item. So that's basically all of the mechanics. Uh, I hope I remembered everything. If I missed something, make sure to uh, leave it in the comments. And my next video is actually going to be a practical example of Beastiary. So I'm going to do a test uh, where I'm going to farm some uh, Beastiary maps and we're going to see how much profit we actually can make with Beastiary. But for this video, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.